Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 30 of this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode. Today, we get into the 2029-30 season, coming off of a Stanley Cup performance. I can't remember if I showed the awards or not last episode, but uh, we'll go and look through them quickly here. Obviously, we've won the Cup two out of the last three years, and uh, we're on a roll right now. The Colorado Avalanche won the Presidents, Vegas won the Clarence, and we won the Prince of Wales. Uh, McKinnon wins the Art Ross and Hart Memorial. McCarr wins the Norris. McKinnon wins the Lady Bing. Uh, their rookie Biggs wins the Calder. Leopold won, won the Conn Smythe this last season. Uh, Koskinen wins the Vesna. My God. Arizona had, or not Arizona, Colorado had just about all the awards this season. That is crazy. Anton Lundell won the Selkie, and then, yeah, McKinnon for all those as well. Jesus, that is just too many awards for one team. Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to get into this season here, moving forward right away. I've already gotten all my scouting done, so we're just going to sim to the regular season. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to split it up into quarters, what we're going to do here. Um... Obviously, we don't really need to spend as much time on the regular season as this team is definitely playoff worthy, but uh, we did bring in these two rookies here in Shane Korea and uh, oh, what's the other guy's name? Harvey Sterling, right? So yeah, we'll see what they are capable of this season and uh, if we can, you know, win with them. Uh, let me just allocate the budget here quickly. Obviously, this is all going to go to arena budget, and honestly, promotions are probably going to get chopped down for the arena budget as well. And that all looks good. All right. All right, so here's just a quick look at our team before we really get into this season. Um, just to look at the overall team, yeah, 100 offense, 95 defense, and 82 goaltending right now. Um, obviously our goaltending has been better in the past, but we are trying to grow Robert Cronwell right now, so we're hoping he's going to have a really good season. Uh, he has an absolutely spectacular defensive core and team in front of him. The only question I've got here with our team is, do we have too much depth? Like, is it going to get to the point where players start to decrease with their morale and stuff because they're not playing enough? Like, guys like Zimmerman on the fourth line is the best place he fits, but at the same time, it's like, you know, he probably probably could be playing up higher in the lineup. Same thing with Visakis as, you know, it'd be nice to play him, like, up here maybe. But it's just not going to happen, I don't think. Uh, that third line's got the plus three chemistry boost, which is pretty huge. Our team doesn't have a lot of those, so I expect them to have a pretty good season. Um, See, and then we got Robert Nylander, who's 27. Uh, he's a great pick way back in 2020, and, uh, you know, honestly, I think he does deserve ice time over Yokim Hakana, or not Yokim, sorry, Samu Hakana. We have a Yokim Hakana in uh, the Draft Glory series, but, yeah, um, I mean, we can play him there just to add even more depth to this lineup, and it keeps a plus one, so you know what, why not? Why not play all our best players where they belong? And then this is how the defense looks. It's still really rock solid, honestly. And, uh, yeah, I got no complaints with it, really. I think maybe we toss Lambos up for this season because, you know, him and Matsumoto honestly just crushed it together over the last few seasons. So I think keeping those guys up together will be good. Letting Tua Mining get some playtime here with Jilson is probably good for the future as those guys are a little bit younger. And, uh, yeah, obviously you're going to contribute to how our team performs moving forward but and then in goal we've got uh, Cronwall and then this Kai Typolis here as well I do believe I went and edited um some of their like some of the goalie pads and stuff like that so they look a little bit more fitting now for this team so I think we might you know, we might simulate this first game against Florida just to provide a little bit of action here. And then I think we're going to sim through the majority of the season. Um, I don't think we're going to do too much there. And honestly, I don't think we really need to propose a lot of trades or anything either as our team, you know, is winning. They're on a good path right now, and we don't really need to be trying to acquire a lot of picks or anything like that. Like, the team's just in great shape here, as you can see by the sheer value of this team. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're in a good spot, but yeah, it looks like our picks are all like about as least valuable as they could possibly be, but 
honestly, we've got goalies. We've got different pieces that we are able to trade um, if we need to. So I'm not exactly worried for our team. And I think things are going to work out here well. I mean, I did consider looking into uh, a team like Buffalo, who we have traded a couple big names to such as Coloma and Bjorkstrand, uh, those guys obviously have kind of been crushing it in Buffalo, but really there's just, there's no real fit for them in this team, unfortunately, and you know, we did make Buffalo a little bit of a powerhouse with those trades and stuff like that, but you know, I'm not worried about it, I think our team's going to be just fine, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into one game here quickly just to give you guys a little bit of entertainment, I know it's not going to be the whole game, we're just going to sim against florida probably and uh see how that goes maybe get one period of gameplay in here and uh go from there but obviously at the eastwood arena at home florida is actually handing it to us right now we're getting outshot getting outscored and uh can florida please wear their like normal away jersey thank you okay so let's jump in have some fun here and then get into a full season sim all right, so by the looks of it, we got a power play right now, too. So let's see if we can convert on this and tie the game up 1-1 one, one right off the bat. That would be pretty nice. Jake Neal picks it. Let's go. You know, that was a good setup, and obviously Neal being a number one overall pick is a very elite player. So, yep, he buries that one with a bit of ease, and we do tie the game up there. And Buddy's asking for your... Uh, for Jake Neal's stick there, so. You know, maybe he's related to James Neal or something like Actually, no, Neal is E A L, not N E I L, so. Definitely different, but uh, good goal. Good goal for sure. So, Hamilton, you know, the fans are expecting a good season from us, and we're going to try to put one up. We do have some crazy good forward depth and just a crazy good team in general, so. I'm expecting big things here. Referee. Face-off win, though, by Nylander, which is always good. Huge pass to Shrimp there. That was sweet. Rory Shrimp tries to make a deke. Is going to pick up the puck again and fire, and that's a good chance. Robert Nylander. You know what? You know what? No. No, you can't do that. There's a good chance for Shrimp again, man. Probably should have converted on that. Perot just gets absolutely hammered. Shrimp should have picked up the puck, but apparently Brandon Perlini is a freaking 95 rated defenseman here, hey? Oh, and that was a penalty? What was the penalty? Charging? You... What? Jilson hit the guy with the puck. It's not interference. That was not interference. He just passed the puck. Holy Jesus, man. What a bad call. Now we're on a 5 on 3. And of course it's in the net within a second. What a disgusting game, man. I'm sorry. That's the only words I have for that. I love how my defenseman's standing right there. Yet, they're still going to hand the puck to him. Like, what the fuck? I'm sorry. I don't mean to curse, but like, look at this. Two of mine is right there. What? Where? Why are you passing the puck to the Florida player? Just play it to the side like I aimed my joystick. God. So now we're going to lose this game off of a whole bunch of ridiculousness. And we drop that one on a pretty ridiculous game. Honestly, we had them pinned. You look at the stats for the game. We deserve to win that game. And Florida walks away with two um, EA Logic goals, really, I'd say. They weren't they weren't nice goals. They weren't deserved. And, uh, yeah, that's just that's ridiculous, man. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Like the, It's a completely even game. We outplay them as far as hits, shots, time on attack, and passing goes and fate like everything we were all over them except we didn't convert on one less power play that was the difference in the game so anyways we are going to get into a full season sim now 
we're going to see how it goes. I don't know what the season's going to hold here, but I'm hoping our team, you know, can kind of try to improve. Maybe try and win a, a uh, President's Trophy this year because, you know, we've... We haven't done it yet. We've placed in the top five the last two years in a row here, but a president's would be nice. So let's see what we can do. So guys, at the end of the 2029-30 season, as you can see there, the Hamilton Tigers put up a 51-26-5 and five campaign. Mikel Savan puts up a 95-point scoring campaign again, and uh, we finish right around fourth, third in the league. Third in the league again. There's two teams always that just absolutely have the best years of their franchises in New Jersey and Vancouver this year. And both teams had over 55 wins. Dear goodness. Okay. Um, so let's just take a quick look into the rest of this uh, this season and this team and how things went. And obviously, you know, we finished atop the Atlantic, which is very good. You like to see us win the division. And yeah, third place seems to be where we're going to be heading into the playoffs. So um, I assume we're going to have a team like New York or maybe maybe Washington. We might get Washington for the playoffs. Who knows? Um, that's always going to be interesting as far as um, how is our offense? Goals for, we finished fourth in the league. All right. Goals for per game obviously is going to be pretty similar. Uh, what about goals against per game? Oh, that's the most, sorry. Least, we were not great defensively. Obviously, that comes with having weaker goaltending, but we're still probably in the top 12 there in the league. Uh, for power plays, we were dead last in total power plays. So we just did not draw a lot. That's not good. Um... As far as power play percentage goes, we finished second in the league, so we converted on almost all our power plays, so that's good. So essentially, we would draw a power play score, and a team would not take another power play, because we'd just make them pay all the time, I guess. I guess. Like, that's the only explanation I have for that. We only scored three short or short-handed goals against. We only gave up three. That was pretty good. We scored 54 power play goals, which is uh not even top 10 in the league probably washington had a lot of power play goals or no wait sorry that's power play goals against my bad um yeah okay and then let's see what was our pk percentage that's always going to be interesting and it was average winnipeg was actually really good at the penalty kill where are we yikes we did not have a great penalty or power play percentage and then our home record was third in the league we were 9-1-0 in our last 10. Wait, that was home record, yeah? Yeah, we were third in the league, and our away record was fourth. Okay. And in our last 10, only us and New Jersey had those crazy runs. So that's good to see. Um, we're going to head into the playoffs after we check out our setting, or not our settings, our score in here. Jeez, what is settings? What? Um. Anyways. Savan puts up 95 points, scores 46 goals. Leopold put up 35 for, I believe that is a career high for him. 91 points, yeah, that's beautiful. Luke Leopold having a great career here in Hamilton. He's 28 now. We drafted him all the way back in 2020, I believe, or 2019, sorry, second overall. Braxton Matsumoto, not Braxton, Nicholas Matsumoto puts up uh, 62 points. Slight improvement on his last season, and uh, yeah, he's doing good as well. Obviously, the captain of this team, and one of our best players. Um, lots of guys put up good numbers, though, for sure. Lafreniere put up 91 points as well. Um, that would be not a career high, but, you know, that's a good number to see from him. Over point of game is always good. And then Mikel Savan ties his point high. No, he broke his point high with 95 points there this season and you know he's been sticking right around that point per game pace he's just behind it actually right now obviously he had um some pretty average years to start here but you know if he can step it up we're going to have a very uh hall of fame worthy player there in Mikel Savan by the time he, he is done his career uh so let's take a look well actually how many wins did our goalies get Cronwell got 44 wins 
in 70 games played, to be fair. But that is huge. Those are great numbers, and hopefully he's going to kind of take the next step here as he finishes third behind none other than New Jersey and Vancouver's goalies for most wins. That's pretty straightforward for our team. No surprise there. And I mean, at 21 years old, he's definitely achieving quite a feat there by doing so. 43 wins for the um, for Nesterov there in Florida. And then Vasilevsky also put up lots of wins. Uh, who else do we recognize in here? Camilleri's elite, but he's already 25. Tucker Tinnen I recognize. Um, Demko put up 31. He's in Arizona now. Bomek put up... 31 okay and then let's take a look at all the scoring so your top scorer was Mika Kavosari scored 69 goals in a season tied with Alex Barkov for points at 115 there and wow that was just a crazy crazy scoring season Salvador Keith in Minnesota's kind of been crushing it to be honest um Kyle Krinkovic Wow, he's 91 rated now in Washington. He has had a fantastic career, I'm pretty sure. He has to have. Yeah, he's he's actually crushing it in Washington. Jeez. Who thought that a top six forward was going to turn out that well for the Washington Capitals? Anyways, um, yeah, pretty big numbers there from a couple boys. Alex Galchenyuk with 98 in Washington. Again, another... He's a top nine. Jeez. Dreisaitl scored 97. Yeah, lot, lots of big scoring names. Um, Savan actually bested McDavid this year, but McDavid is already 33. So uh, Lorenzo Fuhr, I don't really recognize, but he was drafted by Carolina, went to Nashville. You know, lots of uh, lots of similar numbers here between teams. Mika Hacken scored 91. Wow, Florida had a crazy good offense. What about defenseman? Defenseman Quinn Hughes scored 71 or 73 points, sorry, uh, didn't break the double-digit mark in goals, though, like almost every other defenseman on this list. Dwight Dainton scored 60 points in Washington. Wow, he was honestly killing it there. That's that's what you like to see from your ex-players. Um, Jesus Christ, Carson Martinuk is actually insane. He's actually a really good defenseman. Um... Clinton Flynn, we didn't end up taking him, I'm pretty sure, in the draft, but that was in 2020, sorry, yeah. Um, you know, lots of big names here. Uh, Parker Dexter in Montreal, still a high top four. I remember when he got drafted, but Lambos put up 40. That's pretty good. All right, and then for rookie skaters, we have Chandler Sanders, actually one of our players. He went in that deal to acquire... Um, who is it? I think it would have been, it was either Korea or Sterling, I can't remember, but Chandler Sanders has a crazy good rookie year there, puts up 65 points, 45 goals as a rookie. Um, yeah, the Capitals have a nice player on their hands there for sure. Yoshimura, like our top players did not perform so well, unfortunately, in Hamilton, like our top rookies, right? So... 32 points for Sterling, and then I'm sure there was, like, no points scored at all for, um, for what's his name, for Korea here. Yeah, he only put up 11 points, so, you know, hopefully he'll grow. He is a defensive defenseman, so we don't expect him to score a lot, but, yeah, probably could be better. All right, so we are going to get into the actual Stanley Cup playoffs now. I assume we're going to be taking on... Uh, probably going to be Washington. That would be my assumption. But, uh, you know, we can't take any team lightly. It's the playoffs, obviously. And, uh, yeah, we do finish first in our division, so that's a goal passed, and that's always good. We are going to be taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins first round. All righty. So, let's, uh, actually, I just want to check and see if we get any owner goals here. doesn't really look like it, so that's fine. Um... Let's take a look at Pittsburgh here and see what exactly they are rostering. I'm sure, actually, is Crosby retired? I can't remember if he has or not yet. And he has not by the looks of it. Oh, maybe he has. 
Uh, so they got Logan Brown, Cahoon, and Getzel there. All those guys are over 30 years old. So, you know, they're kind of just, uh, they're, they're on a hope and a prayer here with this team. They don't have a ton of talent, and, uh, you know, they're probably looking for some, to be honest. So Para's, you know, one of their only prospects, really. And then they got Camilleri backed up by Murray. So, yeah, not much of a team here, unfortunately, for Pittsburgh. So I think we're going to have it easy. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. That's going to be hard to judge, obviously. And, uh, we're you know, we're going to try to take advantage here and uh, really just win a series easily to end off this episode. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to go. Pittsburgh can be full of surprises as we've seen in the past and uh yeah looks like a lot of good competitive series here um you know the teams that should be walking through are definitely us vancouver and new jersey and maybe florida actually tampa bay was right on our ass weren't they so tampa's the favorites to win that but let's get into this series here so game number one this is going to be interesting uh we do have the ahl team in the playoffs too i did not see where they finished but First period of game one in Hamilton, open scoring, or Slaney opens the scoring. We outshoot them 12 to 6. Second period, it's 1 1 game as Wang scores on Cronwall, and we outshoot them 21 to 17 heading into the third. Bang gives us the lead there again. That's good to see. And then Leopold builds on that lead, giving us a 3 1 lead. Power play for Hamilton does convert as Leopold scores again, and he seems to be on fire right now after winning the Con Smythe last year. So, uh, that's what you like to see. Luke Leopold really showing up here for game one and uh, kind of just makes makes us the dominant presence here. Logan Brown does score once there for Pittsburgh, but uh, okay. And then Lutzer scores. Dear God, boys, if you give that up in the last two minutes. That was a little too close. Uh, I really think we had that game under control right up until the end there. And then eh, we let it slip a little bit, but we did not lose the game. So we do take game one there. Lambos is injured with a mild concussion. That is not exactly what we wanted to see. All right, so with Lambos out, um, how is our lineup going to adapt? Um, first things first, Kelly Jilson's going to move up. And then we don't have extra defensemen at the moment, so we could either move Lars Bang up, we can move Korea up, who fits actually. And then, for now, let me just throw a player in here. I don't care who it's going to be. Probably Gunler. And uh, let's go pull up a player from the minors here because that is what we need right now. We need to make sure that our team is in the best condition possible for the playoffs. So uh, having a 87-rated defenseman down like that is not the best situation. So... Sean Bengoa going to get his call up here, and uh, hopefully he doesn't get picked up by a team when we wave him again, because we're going to have to at some point. So let's just fix this nice and quickly. Bengoa just going to slot into that bottom pairing pretty nicely there. Um, you know, Obviously he would be better up, but whatever, it, it works. And then have to fix this as well, so... And throw Allen in here and uh, maybe swap some players around. Yeah, that looks better for sure. Got Emery and Lidstrom. Yep, okay. And then extra attackers, okay. Let's throw Samsonov and uh, Veshi's fine there, so. All right, um, I didn't really show you guys how the Lions were doing, even though they are a big part of this team. They also went 51, 25, and 6, put up the exact same record as us. So that's funny. Um, actually, I do kind of want to see who their top score was and stuff like that. It looks like Samsonov crushed it this year, put up 90 points. Uh, too bad he's already like 27 years old, but uh, yeah, no, Vitaly Samsonov has been a great depth player for this team. There's no question about that. Pro Cop had a good year. Lots of guys had good years in this team. Nobody had a fantastic year besides Samsonov, really. Um, and then the goalies, we saw another Samsonov here win 21 games. I believe we lost a goalie halfway through the season due to waivers. Um, but I want to see where 
Vitaly's 90 puts him in the league, and he was top of the league by one stinking point. Jeez. Uh, this guy, Sergei Ivanov for Edmonton, actually had a great season. But anyways, back to the NHL, where we are obviously more focused on. With Pittsburgh here, we're heading into Game 2 now. So let's see what Game 2 holds. Obviously on home ice again in Hamilton. I don't know if home ice really means anything anymore to me anyways. But uh, let's see what we can do. So Game 2 starts off with a 1-1 first period. Bathgate and Lafreniere score for their respective teams. We get outshot 12-8. Second period. The scoring turns on for Hamilton as Morgan Basakis and Harvey Sterling, both net goals there, were tied 22 on shots heading into the third, but we do have the two-goal lead. Getzel makes it a one-goal lead, and uh, then Shrep makes it a 4-2 game, then Getzel makes it a 4-3 game. Dear God, we are going back and forth right here. And uh, Yikes. Okay, this is um, a little bit... A little bit too close here, but we seem to be holding the lead here. Power play didn't convert for Hamilton. Power play for Pittsburgh also doesn't convert, and that wraps up game two with another 4-3 nail-biter. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we did, like, Getzel score twice there, but whatever. As long as we walk away with the wins, that is the most important part. And Robert Cronwell's out with an injured groin. Are you kidding me with these injuries, man? What the hell? Like, actually, what the hell? I'm not impressed. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, you have a team that's actually really good and could probably win the cup again? Nope, let's injure all of them. Like, that's literally EA logic, and it's disgusting. So we're heading back to Pittsburgh with an incredibly injured team at this point. Obviously, I do have to edit the lines again as we have lost some chemistry due to injuries here and stuff like that, so... You know, we'll just uh, try to keep it as normal as possible here. Try to keep this forward group running smoothly as it has been so far. But the defense is not in an ideal situation. Neither is the goaltending as we are down to our last legs here for goaltending really with Typolis. And uh, yeah, two big injuries there in Lambos as well as Cronwall. That's just not what we wanted to see here. So... Let's get back into this here. Um, game three in Pittsburgh. You know, if we could win this game, that would be huge. And I haven't checked to see how the uh, lines are doing, but first period in Pittsburgh, we're down 2-1, obviously, as we have the weaker goalie in net. Uh, Rory Schrempf does get a goal for us, but Bathgate and Lutzer both score for Pittsburgh. 14 apiece on shots after the first. Second period. It's a 3-2 game as Lutzer scores again, but the Saucus converts on one of our power plays, and we're out shooting them at this point, 28-25, but we need to keep shooting if we're going to tie this game up. Power play, 5-on-3, does convert as Rory Shrimp nets a goal. That is huge. Power play again for Hamilton, doesn't convert this time, but we are pummeling them on shots. Another power play for Hamilton, still doesn't convert. That's 1-3 this period, and that's not good enough. Power play for Pittsburgh doesn't convert either and we are getting right down to the last minutes here and Pittsburgh scores so they're probably going to win this here and yep they get the empty netter too just to add insult to injury but uh literally we have been insulted and injured in this series so far so that was not the way we wanted it to go in a 3-3 game there obviously not converting on 75 percent of your power plays in a period is pretty atrocious so we got to turn that around. We got to score on these power plays, and I'm pretty sure it's actually my uh, my coach with the assistant rosters has messed up all of our power plays. I'm, I'm certain that's what it's what it is at this point. So let's go and fix that nice and quickly. Yeah, this is not how it's supposed to look. Um, I mean, it's not bad, but that's not how it's supposed to look, <laughs> unfortunately. Um. We can get better chemistry on this. I'm sure of that. You know, let's toss Brian Steves at center on the. Actually, no. You know what? Leopold's smarter to have there. It's actually Slaney who really does not fit. Slaney and Steves are both just bad fits for this power play. Can we try Sterling instead? Does he fit better? Nope. That's awesome, man. 
What about... Oh, we tried... Is Walton on here already? I'm pretty sure he is. What about... We don't really have offensive defensemen, so that's the other problem here with this team, is that we could probably use an offensive guy here for defense. Actually, see, that, that works. Having the defenseman in there makes a difference, so... Yeah, um, that plus one should make our power play a little better. This does not look good at all. Jesus. Again, if we switch out a winger for a defenseman, I think it's going to make a big difference. Yeah, it does. And PK is really good. So, yeah, they haven't been scoring on the power play all that much. But, uh, man, we just got to convert on more power plays. That's the only way I can put it. So... Heading into game number four now. We do have a 2-1 lead, but we want to make it 3-1 here as we drop the game. And, well, let's see what happens. So, first period in Pittsburgh, we take a 3-1 stranglehold as Nicholas Matsumoto gets a goal. Same with Morgan Visakis and same with Tuomainen. Bathgate scores on the power play, though, as our PK does not kill it off. Um, we outshoot them 17-8 in the first period. That's pretty strong. Second period. Still three to one as we're out shooting them thirty six to fourteen. Uh, this is really about as strong a performance you could see from us. But Bathgate scores again on a power play, and then Savan scores to make it a four two game. Um, all right, so I mean, when you're out shooting a team by more than thirteen shots, you should probably have the lead unless their goalie's just standing on their head. Brand Steves makes it a five two game. Shrimp makes it a six two game, and really our depth is showing through here as really we just have a better all around team, a better forward depth, and we take game number three or four, sorry, six to two. Fifty four shots on net, my god. And Bathgate scored two goals for them, but Matsumoto with three points and Savan with two. All right, so this is where we wanted to be. We wanted to have that uh, stranglehold on the team here. By the looks of it, the Capitals have actually got the stranglehold on the Devils right now, and Vancouver's tied two all with San Jose. I like to pay attention to the teams that are ahead of us because they will be teams that have home ice advantage on us. Anyways, heading home. Okay, uh, we do have a roster move here to make. So let's send this goalie back to where he belongs in... Apparently we don't have any goalies in the system. That makes sense. Anyways, let's send Samson on back. Oh, it was Gunler, I think, who got scratched, actually. So anyways, he adds depth to the AHL, so that's good to see. But, uh, you know, obviously we don't like to scratch players if we don't have to. And we kind of did here, so... Anyways, the teams are still in pretty good condition. I mean... The AHL could definitely use a better goalie. Um, so let's just see. Is the AHL team still in it? Yes, they are. Down to game five. That's a little that's a little tight. So let's just uh let's just simulate this one quickly. Just we're gonna go one, two, three, quick period, see what happens. And they're tied one one, up five two. Looks like Mark Cam's getting through and they beat him six three. Beautiful. Alright, so the Lions are through to round two. I don't believe Mark Cam has won. A Calder Cup yet? No, they have not. All right, so maybe this could be their year. That's that's a possibility, but we haven't. Uh, yeah, we've never had a season where we've been the most dominant club in hockey. Completely, like yes, we've won the Stanley Cup two years out of the last three, but uh, you know it really means something when your team actually uh, wins the Calder Cup and the Stanley Cup in the same year. Anyways into game five against Pittsburgh we're up to nothing as Walton and Neal score we outshoot them 20 to 7 I think there's a serious serious skill gap here between the Tigers and Penguins right now anyways second period it's a three all game as they come back and score a couple goals but we are going to jump in here and play because you know three all is definitely worth uh, trying to beat a team here so really at this point you know this isn't our game yet like it's a three all competition here and anything can happen so we just got to play smart play hard and uh not give up any dumb chances so slaney gonna cut in oh my god that is what a franchise center does guys that is just what a franchise center does i was like all right i'm gonna try it short side here see if camillary uh, gets a piece on it and he did not <laughs> what a shot esteban slaney showing why he was one of our first overall picks in this series and really just lights the lamp for the home crowd my god what a shot that is like the most perfect bar down goal i have seen in a while man ping holy jesus 
All right. Um, yeah. Graybeard Strikes Any. That, that's actually a good nickname, Graybeard. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we are up 4-3 now. Boy, I try to toss that up ice, and instead Wang's going to pick it up, and I just kicked the puck in my own net. Are you kidding me right now, two of mine? And, uh, that was just a bad play. Jilson messed up, and somehow the puck ends up getting trickled right into our own net. Like, what? How? How did that just happen, man? Like, I know our players are younger here, but, like, that puck was... Ugh, kick it the other way, Cronwall. I'm sorry. Like, you have to. You can't kick it right back into the middle of the ice. So, yeah, we got a 4-4 game now after a disgustingly bad goal. And, uh... We're just going to try to keep Pittsburgh pinned here, but this is not good as they are now. They've now got life, and uh, that's not what we wanted for them as well. Matsumoto, you can't let the guy walk in. Fuck, you're a 93-rated defenseman. You're playing like you're 81 overall. 81. Matsumoto, you're an 81, okay? You're disgusting. Oh, my God. I can't believe we just did that. Braxton. Get your feet moving, buddy. You just let a freaking 79 rated winger walk in and score on you in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yikes. Oh, jeez. How are we down? How are we down in this game? I'm sorry. Like, what? Get out of here, Sanheim. You're a freaking two-way defenseman. You're not going to be rushing the puck every time you touch it. Um, what? Ha, <laughs> ha. Great game you got here, NHL. Real great game. I've got a goalie sitting right there. All he has to do is poke check the puck, and that's not even a chance. And instead, he just sits there and lets Logan Brown do a little spin flip ballerina twirl in front of the net. Go back to Ottawa, you... Ugh, he's not even a good player, man. Like, what the hell? Who do you think you are? Who the fuck do you think you are, Gabriel Carlson? You think you're God's gift to hockey? You're not. Stop it. Who do you, again, who do you think you are? This is freaking Braxton Matsumoto's team. Nicholas, I drafted a player named Braxton Matsumoto. That's why I keep getting it stuck in my head in another branch I save. But, um, no, Nicholas just drops a cannon from the top of the circle, as he should. We got a one goal game. We should be winning this, and we're, for whatever reason, losing because we underestimated Pittsburgh's ability to, um, rig the EA logic I don't know that's the only way I can describe it like what what else do you describe that as no 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 you don't get to hook me whenever the fuck you feel like it Sanheim that was a freaking charge man come on you can't make passes like that that's physically fucking impossible bitch I'm not watching this I'm not watching this like we literally outshot them by 15 and they score seven goals seven so yeah now we're headed back to pittsburgh for game six what it which is absolutely ridiculous i'm sorry like just what what did we just watch that was a disgrace to hockey at least new jersey got beaten five by maybe we would have gotten beaten five by washington too geez i mean washington came in pretty strong but like What's going on here, man? Like, just what's going on here? Pittsburgh is not that good a team. They literally don't have elites. We should be all over them. So we got to take this here. We cannot let them go to seven games for a team that's this desperate and weak. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for showing a little bit of freaking backbone. God, you guys are just terrible. Anyways, goals from Neil to Aminen and Steves, and we're up 3 nothing after outshooting them 10-7 to in the first. Second period, it's a 5-2 game, and uh, you know what? I'm going to jump in and just humiliate Pittsburgh. We're just going to try to score as many goals as we can on them for what happened last game, and uh, go from there. All right, we're not giving them a sniff. This was just uh, this was a bit too much, so... Oh, nice pass. Oh, my goodness. That is filthy on the shorthanded. That is just filthy, and Greybeard makes them pay. <laughs> that was uh, that was a very nice goal, I have to say. Just good puck movement. The pass, by, the pass that's going to get underrated there is the one by Korea, 
who made it look like he was skating out of the zone and instead sets up the tic-tac-toe. So, uh, yeah, that was just really nice. <laughs> so, still lots of penalty to kill, but that was a sexy goal. Anyways. Anyways, face-off goes back to Lambos. He's going to give that away right in the slot, too. That's exactly where you don't want to give it away. And get off of me, camper. You're not even... A <sighs> The amount of poke checks this team makes without taking penalties in, like, really dangerous situations is just ridiculous and beyond me. Like, what, you have a plus 7 chemistry boost? That's what I'm watching right now, because this Pittsburgh line is their fourth line that has nobody over 81 overall. What? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's our team who's got a plus three chemistry boost on this line, and don't ask me. I can't answer your question on how they just scored. Oh god, that was an absolutely disgusting hit. I don't know who made that, if it was Jilson or... Oh god, let him just have a chance, really, right in front. Anyways, here comes Slaney. Gonna toe drag one, and the goalie was waiting to flash the glove on that. Oh god, that was almost a charge there. Oh, okay. Well, you know, 36 seconds left. We let in their fourth goal of the game, but... Whatever, Iceberg. <sighs> Definitely could have been better. That's pretty bad. We got two guys on him, and it's still in the net. Of course, it's not a shorty either. It's just an even-strength goal. Because Savan was out of the box, supposedly back-checking the guy, but not really. Anyways, Sterling wins that and loses it instantly. That's beautiful. Buddy, what is going on? What is going on? I am, I've got zero control. I've got zero control over my controller right now. Oh my goodness, the EA logic is absolutely at an all-time high right now, isn't it? Dear God, what a disgusting game. Stay out of my end. Eat shit. Of course I get tripped over, but then they don't trip over my guy. Sorry, Pittsburgh, but you guys are just out of time. You're gonna... Okay, you wanna play that game? Shoot it. Ugh, I wanted a fight right at the end because that was just a disgusting hit with one second left in the game. It's fine. Pittsburgh can head home for the summer and f figure out how they're gonna rebuild their team because they really have no team here. So, somehow we go to six with them, but thank goodness we knocked them out. Um, Yeah, that was just... A little bit too much for what it should have been that was god god that was just bad <laughs> so we beat them four to two and uh yeah you like to see it so i assume we're gonna be taking on oh goodness i don't know i don't know who our next rival is gonna be here but we'll figure it out i assume it's gonna be tampa bay or florida probably but uh it always is, isn't it? Like, I literally don't think we've played any other teams in the second round. Yep, it's only been Tampa Bay and Florida in our entire second round history so far. You know, we're get, getting a little bit of a shake-up here with Pittsburgh in the first round. That's not normal in comparison, but uh, Walton with nine assists in the first round. That's pretty good. Um, so it looks like it's going to be probably Tampa at this point, but you never know. So there you have it. The two teams above us get eliminated first round. Well done, New Jersey, you President's Trophy winners. And uh, that one's just got a sting for them. Anyways, uh, let's advance. Actually, I meant to just hit advance a day here. So, um, Okay, so <laughs> Markham's not doing so great here. Anyways, the playoffs are finished here for the NHL. Yeah, Markham loses their first two games there. But we are going to be going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning by the looks of it, and, uh, you know, this will be the third time in the last five years that we take on Tampa first round. The fact that we were able to best Tampa in the standings is huge. We obviously finished with the exact same amount of points, but we just had one more win than them, and that was the only real difference, so 
when we look at these teams, you know, I would assume that Florida was actually the stronger team in the last series, but they just didn't show up. Yeah, that's what it looks like, honestly. They, they have a really good team here in Florida, and they just uh, couldn't get it done. They did sign Seth Jones in the offseason, even, even though he is 35 years old now. Um, still a very relevant defenseman put up. Was he at a point a game? Is that what I saw? Or he only put up... Okay, no, he was... 10 points under a point a game. Anyways, Nesterov, obviously a very good goalie here. And then, well, that was the team that we I was expecting to play, but instead, this Tampa team knocked them out. I mean, yes, Shabbat, uh, Bone Byram, Jacob Larson, and, you know, pretty solid all-around defensive core there. Lots of guys just hitting their primes here at 30 years old. But the, yeah, the... They just don't have the offense, really, in my opinion. So we'll have to shut them down. They do have a couple playmakers. Um, and really, besides that, I don't recognize a whole lot of guys. Like, yeah, Vasilevsky's good. Um, but that's it. Like, I don't know where Kucherov... I think Kucherov might have retired, didn't he? He was getting up there. So, yeah, lots of guys. Uh, you know, the league's starting to change, really. And... Um, and that's the Tampa team we're going to go up against here. Obviously, we have one of the best teams in hockey here in Hamilton as we are defending cup champions, finished top three in the league again, and we are currently the highest ranked team that remains in the playoffs. So the other team that I'm actually super intrigued by is the Washington Capitals and how they turn their year around from having the second overall pick last year into a team that has made the playoffs here. I mean, yeah, this is this is just crazy, man. Like, Sanders has turned out for them incredibly well. I'm surprised at how good he's been. Uh, Dwight Dayton has slotted in perfectly beside Rasmus Dahlin by the looks of it, and they're just crushing it. Um, they also have, okay, Ricard Salani I don't recognize. And then the goaltending is okay, I guess. They actually have better forwards in here, and they're not playing them for whatever reason. Don't ask me why, but they're not. And uh, they should be, really. They they honestly should be playing these guys because they have enough talent in this team that they should be able to win. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, that's the Washington team that we were making trades with the uh, last episode, I guess it was. Yeah, I think it was last episode. Anyways, um, next episode, we will get into this series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, you know, I would assume it's going to be Washington. Actually, New York might have a really good chance here, too. Let's just see what the Islanders have got here on their team, because that could be the other team that's really important here for a team that could potentially beat us. Yeah, they've got Timo Nokalainen, who they just drafted a little while back. And then Lucas Raymond's obviously a very good player. Uh, Dembski, I don't remember when he was drafted. Daryl Flynn's a low elite. Um, I think he was actually a medium elite, probably dropped to a medium top six and then has gone back up to a low elite. I don't know. That's what I would assume. But yeah, this team's this team's good as well. They've got that Martin Nut guy on their defense, but that's really about it. Everybody else is, you know, kind of average. Um, I mean, yeah, they do have a lot of uh, medium top four defensemen too. What about the goaltending? Yeah, see, man, I just don't see. I just do not see how these teams make it through with such average goaltending. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, those are the majority of the teams left in these playoffs. Um, I think we stand a really good chance. We have one of the best goalies in the league on our in our net right now in Nick or in Robert Cronwall. And uh, yeah, I think we stand a really good chance against Tampa with our overall depth and everything. But anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. If you guys are new to the channel and haven't yet, please go down into the bottom right corner and click that subscribe button make sure you uh leave a like on the video if you made it to the end and uh feel free to leave comments and don't forget to turn on notifications but that's gonna be it for me this is etanios signing out and see ya